I'm Adam Kanner. I'm the CEO of Score Big. We're based in New York and Los Angeles, have over 65 people, and are focused on saving people the greatest amount of money on all kinds of live entertainment. For consumers, that means that you're saving up to 70% on sports, concert, and theater tickets. We charge no fees. It's free delivery, and every ticket we sell is below retail price. For the venues and teams that we work with, it's a whole new way to help put um, people into seats. It's helped to fill unsold inventory. The live entertainment industry is about $26 billion a year and about 40% of total industry capacity goes unsold. We make money by sharing revenue and the tickets we sell with our partners um, and we're able to sell them in a way that doesn't hurt their brand and doesn't cannibalize their full price sales, which is why we get access to all kinds of tickets that aren't available anywhere else. We've raised over $25 million to date from uh, venture capitalists and individual investors, including Bain Capital and U.S. Venture Partners. And over the next several years, we hope to be the place people save on live entertainment, helping consumers go to more events um, in a much more affordable way. Thank you very much uh, for having me. It's our pleasure. And uh, would love uh, would love your thoughts on a couple of challenges that we're having. And I think these are challenges to some degree, maybe you know, universal to a lot of startups. But um, one of the great things about startup, you know, startups is this incredibly entrepreneurial, hyper um, performing culture. Um, it's all about getting stuff done quicker, more effectively, working your tail off and, and making it all happen. Um, as you grow, and in particularly in a business like ours that needs to grow, and we've got now 65 people and continue to, you know, be cautious, but continue to grow the resources we need. You know, it's always a challenge to figure out how you continue to keep that absolutely hyper performing culture. Um, it's much easier when you sit with the 12, 15 people that are there. And, um, but what happens is, particularly startups like ours that have been successful, suddenly you move into office space, it's a little nicer, mm -hmm. you know, you've been successful in raising capital. It's how do you continue that urgency um, and how do you create the controls so that, you know, in a world where you want a true meritocracy, um, so the controls that identify, you know, the best people can weed out the poor performers, making sure that's done effectively you know, the right measurements in place, but doing all that without somehow creating excessive PowerPoints and, mm -hmm. you know, and bureaucracy, because at the end of the day, there's just no time for that. Mm -hmm. How do you think about the need to continue to stay that aggressive and that competitive um, and not lose that, again, organic kind of the, the heart of what a startup is? Well, of course, it's a, that's a very loaded question, very difficult to, to, to deal with, but one of the things that, that, that we know is that at some point a business starts to require a specialist. So you start a business with entrepreneurs and risk takers, people that want to be on the leading edge or the bleeding edge, people that are incentivized by stock options and, and that kind of thing. The excitement of being around a bunch of you know, bright, intelligent, aggressive entrepreneurs. But at some point, 50 employees, 100 employees, I don't know what, you're going to have to start getting specialists in your business, people that are specific to marketing, people that have a, a very deep uh, experience in finance uh, or operations. And at, at that point, the, the organization, the culture begins to shift. And I would think that, that one way that, that one would do it is, is, is make sure that, that you're out in front of these people and that you're aware that the culture is going to change don't fight the change in the culture necessarily, but continue to create the climate where people can be motivated, where people can be excited, but it's more in a, in a little more of a structured environment. If the goal is to try to continue to give people mobility, continue to give them as much opportunity as possible, are we just too early to think about more structured ways of doing that? Is it, is it, how, how do you think about that kind of employee growth um, or again, is it, you know, do we need to get through the startup, is it after yeah. the startup phase where you then go into affording, you know, to do that more, more concretely? Well, I think the most important thing is, is getting a very well thought out vision and mission. And a very compelling, a compelling vision and mission. And it should be written. But most entrepreneurs attract people because they tap into your vision. They believe in your vision. So the first people that come to an organization are, are really disciples, right? I mean, there are people who really are in love with your concept, believe in you, and you're going to bring those people in, and you're gonna, they're going to have experience somewhere else. You're not going to have a hard. You're not going to have time to train them. Right. 
It's kind of like guerrilla warfare. I mean, you give them a gun, you give them a grenade, and you say, we got to take the hill. There's no organization structure. Maybe there's a couple of phone communication capability. Maybe we've written a little bit of a plan on the, in the dirt, okay? But as the, as the business evolves and moves ahead, again, those jack-of-all-trades who are true entrepreneurs who buy into your vision and your mission are going to help drive that business for the first phase or two, the first round or two, Series A, Series B. But at some point, you're going to have to go back to the specialization. And some of the folks that helped you get to Series B are not the same people that are going to get you beyond to the, to the finish line. Right. And so the challenge is I wouldn't focus on training as much as I would focus on making sure that your expectations are aligned with your strategy and make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And call out the ones that aren't, even though they were the first ones in there, helping you dig the ditch. And that's the hardest thing that any entrepreneur will ever do. Yes. People ask me, what were the two things, or the one or two things that, that you would do, that you would do differently if you'd had to go back uh, through your business? And number one was, I would let people go before rather than late. And that doesn't mean you, you want to go out and you want to slice wrist and you're not, you're not going to reward loyalty, but that just means that you have, to have a, a, you have to have a system of accountability right from the beginning, set your expectations in, li in writing right away, review, performance review, make, make sure you have those on a regular basis, and, and we said, at Imes we call it pruning the bush is every year we would go through our organization and we would look at who were contributing and who weren't and we would put a plan together to help those people who weren't contributing get back on track. And if it's at some point they couldn't get on track, then we either find another spot for them or we help them find employment somewhere else. And then the other thing that I would do differently is I wouldn't spend as much time at the office. Are you being serious? <laughs> I'm being serious. God, I would love that. <laughs> you know, it, it's what we teach here, be working on your business or working in your business. And if you spend time working on your business, instead of being ingrained in the process, being a central part of the, the, the network, so to speak, um, you, sp you spend a lot, lot less time working on the details and you spend more time working on strategic things. And th that's the difficulty of the, of the startup entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. As a startup entrepreneur is good at doing things. Absolutely. But at some point you got to stop doing things and start creating things. You know, I really appreciate no, I, that. I'm, I appreciate you coming and of, I'm so excited about about your business. That's uh, that's really that's really great. It's a well, great concept. Thank and, you very uh, much. It's, uh, and it's terrific to meet you and this good whole luck. process was great. So I really appreciate you having us. Great. For having me. <laughs> Thanks. Great.